From this we proceed to the pre-operational stage. Now we have already, we are able to, to take in simple concepts. We cannot reverse. Uh, the most interesting thing is, why I put this down here, more water. You have a beaker of water. You put it into a cylinder which is higher. So the water goes into the cylinder. The child invariably will say, there is now more water in it. You pour it back, now less water. Doesn't make any sense to the other. Then we come to the next stage with the bar from 7, 11, maybe 12 years, the concrete operations. Now, this is where it begins, it begins to get interesting, and this is the stage we are really concentrating on in all this here, because what happens? We are now, we have conservation, which means we can also reverse a certain, uh, certain process. We have uh, reason, we can do mental experiments. However, and I have to highlight this, only if related to objects. Concept and number, etc., etc. Then from there on, we go into the final stage, the adult thinking stage, which is which uh, PRG called formal operations. <coughs> Here we have logic, abstract, think, abstract thinking, etc. I'll give you one example. A yellow elephant tried to get into the botanical gardens, but he couldn't get in because he found the, the gates, the gates was not wide enough for him to go through, so he had to scramble back. You see, I, I explained this to you, you know exactly what happened. So this is abstract thinking, we don't need the objects anymore. We can explain something, you know what I mean. This is not so in the complete operational period. Um, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. You can imagine someone can come along and say, oh, well, there's a land mass here, a land mass here. If I put an inverted U on, unless the moon falls on top, there is no way to push this apart. So this is a stable unit. We reinforce it by a triangular lines in this way as well. And we have the whole harbor bridge in our heads already composed. This compares, then of course we have to go in the drawing, what to put it all down. That's a different story, it's the next stage. But Com compare this to the invention of the ballpoint pen. Now, I'm not quite sure if this is true or not. Some kids were playing the street with a cricket ball. And the cricket ball fell into a vessel of hot tar because someone was, uh, there were people who were repairing the road. <coughs> the, uh, one of the workmen took a shovel and just tossed it out. Some wise man came along and noticed this and thought, this is interesting. There's a trace left behind. Now, if I put this ball into, uh, say, a pipe, in the hollow pipe, and put tar on top, I should be able, you know, to write. Now, all we have to, re to do is reduce it to a very tiny fraction, to a small measure, and now we have the ballpoint pen. This is a concrete operation because he had to see what was happening. It was a ball running, even a trace. Now, apart from this model, we have, we could go on at infinitum to explain how the world of the adult, the perception, differs from that of the child. For instance, children have different ways of learning. We have different modalities which we prefer. Some people are very visual, some people are very auditory. Uh, there was one case I heard about some years ago, a 16-year-old boy who has never been able had never been able to teach to, to learn to spell until someone came along and cut out letters using sandpaper. And as the story goes, there was this boy, ah, oh, now I can see it. He was psychologically, one might say, blind, but had this very strong kinesthetic sense. So we're all different. Another one is, if you imagine we have uh, different characteristics, one of those is, for instance, <coughs> uh, if you imagine here is a teacher or a parent who is highly logical. And there are the people who say, you do as I say because I say so. There is no black and white. And you have an intuitive child. I have some disastrous case histories where this happens and a terrible, lot, a terrible loss of potential. 
is the result. Now, how do we how do we bridge the gap? Before I go on, there's another extension here if I find it. These are the Schmetting additions to the Piaget model. <coughs> this is where science has not yet caught up, and that was mentioned, was it last night? And someone said, yes, it's been healing, etc., etc. This is where science has not caught up with. But some children are already from that stage and hop right over here. I've experienced those children. And others, this goes back to Carl Jung's collective unconscious. But leaving this aside, an important one is prenatal psychology. And that is where so much has been known already by so few. Even in the first trimester of life, a child can already individual can already be programmed in a certain direction of life. Anyway, to summarize what we have done so far can be put in one sentence again from the wisdom of Piaget. Piaget. Concrete operational children operate on objects, he said but not on verbally expressed hypotheses. The question is, how does this now relate to many things we teach? How does it relate to many parents who talk to their children who are in the, maybe in the sensuomotor uh, uh, phase from their point of view, from their adult phase? where they use logic which to the child does not make any sense. How can we do it better? Now I've got here some, I'm not quite sure, I might have to skip over this. Uh, I've got an abbreviated uh, year from this year. There are various factors which we can consider <coughs> how to get, um, how to get over this hurdle, you know, the different perceptions. Uh, first of all, we're using principles only. I'm talking about, I'm centering this on the concrete operation of child, uh, which we can also overlap in both the directions and some even in the other two. Uh, I, this is on the handout, so I might just uh, run out of time. Just getting a bit anxious here. Practical example. <coughs> this first one is not my own. In, I believe, in 1988, the World Conference took place in Australia. The World Conference on Gift and Down to Children took place in Australia, in Sydney, in fact. Has anyone been there? No one? Uh, one of the presenters, whose name I cannot remember, I can't give her credit, but she produced a beautiful demonstration of how to give wisdom to the, pre, to the uh, concrete operational child and to adults for that matter. Does everyone know what the synaptic gap means? Does everyone not know what the synaptic gap means? I'll tell you this very briefly. Imagine you're on a highway, you're traveling along at 100 kilometers, and there's a kangaroo suddenly in front of your car. Now what happens? From here, we have to send it to the back. It says, oh, it's a kangaroo, aha. Uh -huh. Decision making, up to this mm, part up here, the motor, motor area, which says, please put the foot down, will you? Now from here, the signal travels right down, spine, etc., down, until finally the foot goes down on the brake. By then, of course, the kangaroo is dead and we are cars damaged. Why are we so slow? Because we are electrochemical.